attention to Harlem and its problems. Within a year, he appointed the first black magistrate in the city's history and pressed forward with public works projects to benefit black residents. Excavation is begun for Harlem's first low rental housing development. These new Harlem homes, when finished, will help ease the housing crisis in one of the worst New York slums. Also in the wake of the riot, the mayor formed a commission to study conditions in Harlem. The report was highly critical of the police and the prejudice that touched almost every city department. LaGuardia was not prepared to place Harlem at the top of his agenda, but he did commit more resources and personal energy to the black community. He'd have a dinner party up at Gracie Mansion, and the audience would be stacked, all integrationists, except for one department store owner who hadn't done the integration. And as the conversations at the dinner table somehow would lead around to this, and everybody would talk up in favor of the need and what they had been doing and whatnot. And this poor Patsy was the only one out of 20, see, and he left there convinced that he had to do something about integration. He would give out a call and he would say that you have to take on, go into this community, take on people. He insisted that people be employed. And he did not talk against discrimination, but he would say, we've got to get more blacks. We have to get more people of different races and so on. And so you had the beginnings of opening up of City Hall, first to this mayor who was elected, who was himself Italian and Jewish. And then by the end of the decade, uh, opening reluctantly or otherwise uh, to um, uh, somewhat more influence uh, by uh, the black community. In New York, the mayor could prod and cajole, but the power to create more sweeping social and economic changes lay in Washington. After two years of emergency measures, Roosevelt created the Works Progress Administration and by presidential order forbade the agency to discriminate on any grounds. The WPA became the biggest alphabet agency, the biggest spender, the biggest employer of them all. WBA, WBA, don't mind the boss if he's cross when you're gay. He'll get a pink slip next month anyway. Three little letters that make life okay. WBA. Under the WPA, so many people found jobs. And I think that we can never play down the importance of the WPA. Without it, there'd been many who would have simply lost some of their skills in their town. I like the idea that, uh, as we look at it today, so many programs that got started then through but WPA workers laid the foundation for a better future. Well, after six years being out in the street, I guess, and working down on Wall Street, it's pretty good getting a job. My wife told me, where you going, 12 o'clock? I said, I got to get on that line and get a ticket, and here I am. So if you see me, I'm not lying. WPA workers built 651,000 miles of public roads, more than 125,000 buildings, more than 8,000 parks. The agency funded hot lunches for children of the poor, daycare for working mothers, and provided federal support for the arts, paying writers, musicians, actors, painters to perform, teach, and create art across America. To the Roosevelt administration, man went to work, he began to get recognition of himself. He began to feel better inwardly. So he could walk up, he wasn't stooped. Before he was stooped down, and he walked around and he was really depressed. And Roosevelt gave these guys a new set of hopes, and that kind of changed the ball game a bit. By 1936, 
New York City was receiving one-seventh of the WPA budget for the entire nation. Roosevelt said about LaGuardia, he comes to Washington and tells me a sad story. The tears run down his cheeks, and the first thing I know, he has wangled another $50 million out of me. And we shall continue on our onward march of progress to make this a better and a happier city. The mayor and Robert Moses continued to modernize New York. The West Side Highway would make it possible to drive non-stop from one end of Manhattan to the other. The Guardia Airport would become the busiest in the world, handling 200 flights a day. Schools, parks, 10,000 new public housing units, all part of a massive building campaign, made New York a leader in the new federal partnership with America's cities. On July 11, 1936, with Mayor LaGuardia and Robert Moses in attendance, President Roosevelt dedicated the bridge that had brought pain and now pride to New York City. Another vast project takes its place among the nation's monuments to progress. The Triborough Bridge, $60,300,000 highway link, awaits its dedication by President Roosevelt. Yes, people require and people are demanding up-to-date government in place of antiquated government, just as they're requiring and demanding Triborough bridges in the place of the ancient ferries. Government itself cannot close its eyes to the pollution of waters, to the erosion of soil, to the slashing of forests, any more than it can close its eyes to the need for slum clearance and schools and bridges. May the Triborough Bridge, in the years to come, justify our efforts and our hopes by truly serving the city, the state, and the nation. The things that he did said to us, no matter who says, that feeding the hungry or giving clothing or helping those who need housing to get housing, no matter who says that creates dependence, that the government has to take a hand. He saved capitalism, whether this is a good thing or not. I'm not about to betray my sentiments, but he saved it. It could very well have gone under, and those who said he's a traitor to his class didn't realize he was their savior. But remember, the people at that time were called downtrodden. They had no leads, they had no hope. So you had two new guys come into the picture, Roosevelt and LaGuardia. And they stayed with America for a long, long time. The image of Roosevelt